Hello, this is Bunting, and today I'm covering beats in the style of Ivy Labs. Let's go. And also some extra sounds I'm going to cover. Yeah, just Ivy Lab type sounds. But yeah, all right. But you now let's get right into this, bro. The first thing you really need to get down for any Ivy Lab type beat, right, is the groove, you know, because in beats, future beats, Ivy Labs, the groove is everything. You want it to sit around sometimes even 60 to 80, I think 80 is around the sweet spot for this type of stuff, and get a knocking kick. You know, if you want knocking kicks, my website, buntingmusic.com, you could see it right down below. There's plenty of knocking kicks, my favorite kicks. I use them all the time, but yeah. And also, it might help to soft clip them with this little preset, turn the makeup up. Yeah, it's in Ableton. But anyways, the snare, a lot of times you want a weird snare, you know, type thing. And when you're writing out this groove, I like to use MIDI, you can use whatever. But really just hit in these little subdivisions a lot. You see, I'm hitting these little lines all the time. Right, that's just a simple way of saying, like, make it very swung, make it very swinged, whatever. That really just gets a pocket going, if you know what that means. Something you could bob your head to, because if you ain't bobbing, you I don't know what you're doing, honestly. Again, groovy hats. I laid a little percussion on top of the kick too because I heard them do that, right? And a lot of time they have these kind of percussion loops, either they're samples directly or they're samples arranged. One thing that's pretty useful since you're going to be working with a lot of samples in this style is to press A, right? And that'll turn off this little thing here. You can just click it. And then you have access to fades, which basically you can shape the volume of the sound with, which is super useful if you want to take a sound like and make it yeah rip your ears but you get the idea it's pretty useful especially if you just wanna yeah make t really tight grooves and the great thing about this future beats kind of style is you can use the craziest sounds ever as percussion there are no rules really and even for most of the stuff, you know, just have the bass, have the drums, have the percussion, but make it rhythmic. Rhythm is super important. Make it all super rhythmic, super groovy, super head bobby, and you're set. One other thing that's useful working with samples, you can reverse them real quick. Get some nice variations and movement, right? Before I cover this kind of sub bassy 808 patch, I'm going to continue to expand on that rhythmic aspect, right? They just use random cool vocals chopped and all sorts of their stuff. This is just from an acapella. I just looked up acapella. And also, if you're wondering where to get percussion samples, a ton on my website as well. All free. There's some paid stuff too, but yeah. I just look up percussion, just look up acapella. I really recommend just digging through Reddit, finding a ton of samples to use. And using YouTube to MP3 to get a lot of samples. That's what I use for a lot of acapellas. Right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, just find a cool acapella, chop it up, make it rhythmic, you know, and reverse it if you want. But as long as it's kind of rhythmic, you hear how it's in. As long as it's rhythmic, you're in business, right? You're headlining, right? little melodic sample because they like some melodics in their work. They do use a lot of samplers, you know, which means stuff like contact, kind of real instrument type things that you can program into the doll. You know, if you want a sampler, Labs is free or get contact, but it's super expensive. But in substitution of that, samples. This is a piano sample from my pack. I swear, I'm not just trying to plug myself an absurd amount. Like, these are just the samples I come across and I like them, so I use them, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, no. Actually, the bass stuff now, right? Of course, Ivy Labs, that bass, that bass is crucial, right? With the added CPU just being destroyed, right? But I use Vital for this because it's free and you guys love Vital. I love Vital. It's incredible. The 
basic premise is you can distort a sine wave in a lot of different ways and get a lot of different subby textures, right? But for this, I said fuck the sine wave because let's uh, you would pick a sine wave through basic shapes, right? Right. But I decided turn off this distortion. Use this triangle wave for that kind of weird high end because sometimes Ivy Lab likes to get weird with it. They are kind of experimental in the stuff they do, right? And to add even more weirdness. I add a little saw wave, turning the volume down, where there's that little bit of crisp, which is hard to hear with the crisp of my CPU, right? And of course, on top of that, distortion just makes it huge, adds more harmonics, right? Makes the sub sound fatter, and yeah, all sorts of stuff. I'll cover more type of different ways to make 808s and subs in a bit, right? But one thing to note, Let's say you wanted this to be an 808, right? All you would do is you would take uh, the pitch, right? Take the pitch of any oscillators you're working with and make it go down real fast. It's a little too high, so whoops, we could just drag this amount down and turn it faster. You hear it there. Is it that little pitch bend is what gives it that mm, kick, like the mm, whatever you want to call that, right? But I hope that demonstrated it. Also, another thing you could do is just destination. You could put it on uh, voice transpose or voice tune. So all the oscillators you're working with are tunes at the same time, which is pretty useful, right? You don't have to match things. And one more thing to note in this patch before I move on is you want this legato. They like a lot of cool pitch bends in their stuff. It makes the sub 808, whatever you're working with, pretty saucy, right? So just turn up this glide, this glide knob here. Uh, turn on legato, always glide. And any note you'll hit will glide around and jump to each other, right? Also, I drew in actual pitch bends, right? Because that's just a cool way to make the sub more interesting. Had a little... repurpose that sub as a cool fill lead thing but yeah okay i'll talk about subs more after i progress onward right and then i have this little fill here so i bounce this to audio i have a whole thing on resampling right but you could just freeze this flatten it right and once you freeze and flatten whatever you're working with you get this which is an audio clip of it and from there that's nice because you can shape it, right? Just like I was talking about with the phase earlier, you unclick this. You can shape it, you can copy and paste it, really mess with it. I reverse this here. And you can also transpose it, which gets you some cool kind of glitchy artifacts, which you also hear in a bunch of uh, Ivy Lab stuff. But I just decided to put it up an octave, yeah. They just go stupid with the subs and 808s, pitch bending everywhere, jumping all over the place, all kinds of chopped and screwed madness. And it's a fun time for all, especially the listener, right? So this, I have a little, actually kind of a bass here. You know, if you listen closely in some of their stuff, well, some it's very obvious they have definitely like bass sounds, right? But other times it's more subtle. So I made a little subtle bass. This you can call, it's kind of neuro bass, super common right and the premise of that is take some sort of rich waveform in this case I took a sine wave uh, sine wave from basic shapes distort the heck out of it and add notches right notches but they basically sweep a little cut in the frequency spectrum just like this and yeah that adds nice movement to your sound to get this notch wave you click this this means band pass I mean band peak notch so now it's a band, now it's a peak filter, now it's a notch filter. And I drew in this LFO all funky like, assigned it to this cutoff. And you could draw in any shape you want for this and have a fun time, right? And then for more notch filtering, I got an auto filter from Ableton, right? And if you watch my resampling video, you see you can like do this forever, automate anything, draw it in whoever you like to see it, and yeah. Another thing you can kind of hear Ivy Labs use, I'm not sure if they use it, but it gives you a great gritty full sound, this amp, 
right? Just Ableton's amp. You drag it in. By default, it sounds dank, but you can change the mode. Get all sorts of different modes. Try wet. Yeah, you know the deal. Okay, next auto filter. This is a low pass. Low passes are sick just in general for like some subtle movement to really it just makes anything subtle and have a direction at it. Without the low pass, it just sound like crazy. It sounds kind of sick, but for the subtlety, I have all these frequencies cut out and then opening up right at the end. That added a bit of reverb at the end just to make it echo out, right? But yeah. In the end, kind of a basic neuro sound, which very versatile to use, right? But one thing I want you to know is you can really throw any cool sound in here as long as it's rhythmic and subtle and tasteful. Yeah. And at the end, I don't know why I cut that off. But yeah, I cut out the lows so it's not interfering with the sub frequencies playing. Definitely cut out the lows and maybe some of the mids so you don't want to interfere with any of your subs. I did the same thing to this piano. This glue compressor just makes it louder. Yeah, that's that. Okay, now the second part. And so the second part arrangement, then I'll cover some of the some of their other sound design that I didn't work in here. Right. The main thing to note, of course, I have these drums. Have a cool clap sample. Also from my packs, buntingmusic.com. But switch up the drum groove a bit. Have this percussion loop. But first, I'm going to talk about the 808. Forget all that. Bouncy 808 from one of my packs. Right, really taking advantage of these fades and transposition features. This stuff sounds super familiar for Ivy Lab because, yeah. What makes it kind of experimental and cool is that you're not used to an 808 being outside of those sub frequencies like this. But when it is, you're in business. And also, as a tree, I'll teach you some 808 stuff at the end to get stuff sounding like this. Again, very rhythmic and in the pocket, not really caring about much else other than cool grooves, right? And to add on to this cool groove, right, this percussion loop, which is just this bongo loop, just I think it's like in some deep, dark, and dangerous sample pack, which is up for free a while ago. But I took little sections out, basically cutting and pasting, and then just transposed them to get some cool glitchy -ness. You see, every little cut is where I did that. Yeah, just cool stuff. Now this crazy metallic type lead. There's a few ways you can get this metallic lead. A lot of time they just use metallic samples like pots and pans, right? But a lot of times, maybe in addition to that, you, they use corpus. So what does corpus do, right? Let's turn off all this. Corpus is sick, right? It's slept on. But it basically, it's as if you're resonating a sound through an object. So you have a beam, marimba, string, membrane, plate, right. And I like when it, how it sounds low. And you could just change the tune of it. And just automating that. And turning the decay down so it's a little tighter and not it's just ringy. And you could just repeat that automation, do whatever with it. You can have multiple going on at once. You know, I just love corpus. Yeah, this isn't just for percussion, even though it's great. You can put it on basses, really experiment with it. You see me use it a lot in my live streams if you want to check those out. That's on my channel on a little playlist. And I add a little saturator just to make it louder. And drum bus, right, if you just drag in drum bus, what I like to do on drum bus, I turn the drive down, damp up, decay down, and mess with the transients. This transient knob is everything. It just makes stuff super punchy and to the point. Also just boosted the highs a bit because I'm crazy. Yeah, this is this is fucking, I won't lie. Percussion sound. Yeah. And another vocal chop. Again, all rhythmic, another little thing. Little thing pitched around, going crazy. You get the deal. 
really throw any cool sample, throw any cool sound in there, make it rhythmic, okay? Done with that very sloppy arrangement tutorial, right? But that's what, how we do it, okay? How do you make this shit, okay? Well, just in Vital, it's just a sine wave, you know? Just like everything else ever done on this channel here, it's a freaking sine wave, basic shape sine wave. But you throw amp on it, amp on blues mode, whoops, amp on blues mode, and another amp on bass mode, all of a sudden you get harmonics, right? And you hear this stuff in some of their heavier type of things. You can really just put so many amps on on different modes and settings. For endless fun, really. Yeah. Kind of stupid fat just for some amps, but you get the idea. Then for that classic halftime noise layer, I just take the hiss preset for erosion. Literally just adds a little band of white noise up here. That is stereo. And yeah, that's awesome. Right? If you're really picky about it, you can go in with a saturator and twist some knobs on there too. Right? Bass. Yeah, all stuff they would use. Right? With maybe a bit of notch filters like I showed earlier. Right? Okay. So that's that. A next, another bass. You hear this re space all the time. It's a classic sound, but very simple, right? It's just two saw waves, right? You can just take the init patch or basic shapes, go through here, turn up this unison amount, and have a second one turn up the unison amount, right? And from there, you can mess with the detune. And also, I turn up this octave 12. Turn down the level so it's not as overwhelmingly high. And low pass it, right? You can mess with the filter, and I pitch bent it, right? But in the end, just detune saw ways with some type of filter. That's your re space. Super simple, super effective, super popular for a good reason. That's just a cool kind of sound. You hear wubs like that in their work, which honestly could just be 808 samples, which is why I showed that. And that's just with different fade. Chopped up, different fade. And here's kind of a harmonic sound that you might hear right here. I use Vital for this just because you guys love Vital. It's your favorite, most favorite ever. Don't be alarmed. This isn't that complicated. Let's get rid of everything. Right, one sine wave. Two sine waves at a different pitch. Right, three sine waves also at a different pitch. Right, the pitches you want to be mindful of because you kind of want it to be in a fifth or an octave, right, or else it's going to sound kind of shitty. Basically, this is like an octave and a fifth above 36, right, if you were to do the math. Now, I'm not going to count the semitones. This is two octaves above it. And if you add a little distortion, fat add a little filter with this envelope giving you a bit of pluck on this cutoff here and I decided to modulate the attack at the end to give it that wub now also a sound you would hear in Ivy Labs type stuff and I just made this because I thought this would be a cool effect you guys would want to know I think you hear this in like cake or something so basically you notice how it gets faster the higher note there is that's because of this sampler, right? So first of all, I just did two little triangle wave plucks, right? Just like you would do any pluck. I just use CRM to make it super quick. Envelope, filter, triangle wave, yeah. Super fat, that, that. I froze it to audio, if you want to know how to freeze, freeze track, and then you click flatten, right? There you go. And then create a new track, drag in your sample, right? Play it out, put it wherever. But you notice, it stops now. You want it to loop and be super cool, just click loop and then drag it shorter to where you want to loop it from. And the higher note you go, the higher it will go. That's a cool effect. That's a really cool effect. But yeah, I mean, that's some Ivy Lab sound design on top of some Ivy Labs arrangement, right? But to really send it home, I gotta say it one last time. Do whatever you want, man. Just make the 808 slap, make things groove really good in that pocket, whatever that means, right? But keep it all rhythmic. You can use the weirdest, most experimental, crazy sounds ever as long as it's rhythmic. 
you're in business, you know? And I think that really could be an eye opener for you, you know? Just really experiment, really have fun with it. And yeah, again, got to plug my website, buntingmusic.com. If you want these samples and more, there's plenty of free ones, plenty of played, one, played ones. You can get lessons from me on there as well. And also, if you support me on Patreon, you get this project file. Yes, this whole project file with everything in it and all the other ones from my videos and live streams and stuff like that. One other thing, like the video, that helps me out. Comment if you have any questions or suggestions for a future video. And to wrap this up, join the freaking Discord, right? Because there's a Discord and a bunch of community boys are in it. Um, that's I didn't pull it up because it's not on screen. But yeah, link in description. We're starting a bunch of community events. Yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I hate talking this long because it doesn't really matter in the end, right? All that matters is the vibes, is the music. Okay, whatever that means. It's your boy Bunting. Peace the heck out. Frick.